So, yeah, I, I will be very careful with that. It, it, it was funny because during the summer when I was trying it, when like I first realized that there was something messed up with it, I'd pull it and it'd go up. I'd pull it and it'd go up. And I'm like thinking, it's like, you know, who's going to look foolish, me or the screen? And it's like, it's going to be me. So I better figure out a solution quick because, you know. So well, I admire their ingenuity. Um, have we had fun so far in this class? Yeah. Okay, good. Because we're going to start having a blast now. All right. <laughs> the first, uh, the first uh, few chapters uh, of the book are the very basics, the fundamental things, and they're necessary to move on to the next step, and that is adding some personality to your page. All right, because so far our pages have consisted of text and links, which, you know, that's what by and large like real old school web pages look like. Um, let me just pull up one that's actually still around, but it, it's pretty much the kind of pages we've been doing so far. Um, right here. Calculus.org. This is like what most old school web pages look like. And, and even though we're using HTML5, we're sort of duplicating this look where we have lists, links, paragraphs, and so on. They get a little fancy with their little rainbow thing, but I don't even like that. But anyhow. Um, so what we're going to get into now is start adding, for lack of a better word, personality to our page. Adding being a little more concerned about not just the content and the structure, but how it looks. Um, and we're going to do that, first of all, to, to kind of preview the next three or so topics. Today we're going to talk about images, all right? Because, uh, you know, what's the web without images? You know, most web pages have some sort of image going on on them just to, uh, uh, just to break up the text and, and a picture's worth a thousand words, as they say, and so on. So we're going to talk about images today. And I don't know, maybe into Monday of next week. It depends how it goes today. We're then going to probably very quickly visit the chapter about links. Because I think we pretty much covered that one already, just in, in conversation. Uh, I'll look through it to see if there's anything that we, we missed. Uh, again, you ought to be reading it. So even if I don't explicitly cover it in class, that, that you'll, you'll get the material. Uh, Again, the idea is, is that if you take the lectures plus the book, that gives you a better view than either one of them would by themselves. And then we're going to get into CSS. And that's when we're really going to be living it up and having a blast. Because then we can start doing things like controlling the appearance, controlling the layout, and really making our pages look the way that, that we want them to, as opposed to just following a very uh, rudimentary uh, layout and, and color scheme and, and so on. And that's important. Uh, it, you know, we want to make our pages visually appealing, right? Um, there's a, uh, th there's a, uh, uh, a, a book called, I forget what. It's written by Don Norman. Um, emotional Design. I believe it's called. He's talking more about design of physical things like, you know, iPods and cell phones and, and household uh, appliances and so on. But he says that pretty things work better. All right? And you might think of that as like, wow, that's superficial. But his notion, if you, if you hear him out and, and, and read the full text of it, he talks about that when things are likable, when you like things, you're more willing to maybe work through a problem. Uh, you are, uh, you're going to enjoy the experience of using it more, and so on. So that's one thing that we want to do with our appearance. We want to make it aesthetically pleasing because that will enhance the user's experience, uh, experience with the site. Uh, we can use uh, colors and other things to create a mood on a site. You know, a site that is meant to be serious should look serious. A site that is meant to be 
fun or entertaining should look fun and entertaining. Um, and through CSS we can do that. Uh, it's not just a matter of making it look nice to look nice. It actually improves the user's experience. But more important than that even is we can structure the page in a way to sort of help people out. All right. We've, we've created sections for navigation. We've created sections for heading. We can change the appearance of it to sort of group things and lay things out in a way that will make the user's experience better. So we really are going to add a lot when we start getting into CSS. But our topic today is images. All right. And I'm going to start out by asking probably, or, or let, let me rephrase this. I'm going to start out by asking what may sound like a dumb question, all right, but let's think it through all the way, all right. And my seemingly dumb question is, how do we obtain images for our website? How do we obtain images for our website? Okay, number one is you have a camera and you take your own uh, pictures. That's one. Do it yourself. Take your own pictures. Someone said Google, all right? And in an educational context, that's okay. But if you're talking about for a professional site or even for a personal site, that's not okay. Um, unless you get permission from the copyright holder. Well, how can you get permission from the copyright holder? You can contact them and say, hey, can I use your picture? And they may say yes, they may say no, all right? Uh, they may charge you for it, all right? But the other thing that you can do is you can look for pictures that are licensed under what's called a Creative Commons license, all right? Creative Commons license is a way that creators of any sort of content, whether it be images or video or music, can put their material out on the web and say, and sort of give a blanket permission and say, you can use this as long as you meet certain conditions. And there's, there's, uh, you know, there, there's a handful of different options as far as what those conditions are. For example, you might say that you can use this if it is for not a commercial uh, concern. So if you're a nonprofit, you can use this. All right? If you're a person just doing a personal site, you can use this. But if you're a business making money, then you can't use it. And then we want to, you know, then we want to talk if you want to use my picture and, and I'm going to want to get some money out of you. All right. Um, you can license it where anyone can use it. Even commercial uh, use it. Um, but they have to give you credit for it. So in other words, you know, if you were a, a young photographer, let's say, and you wanted to get some attention to yourself, you might license some of your pictures this way with the hope that someone will see them and say, I like it, I want to use it. And you'll get a credit for that. And there'll be a way of building up your resume and, and that sort of thing. So you set the permissions that, that, that you want to have. Uh, one of them is that people can use it, but they can't alter it. Like let's say you had a picture of the Cleveland skyline. All right? You could say people can use that, but you can't do something like, you know, having Godzilla, you know, fo Photoshop it to add Godzilla in the background or something like that. All right? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to a popular site for photo sharing called Flickr. And we're going to go and, and do a couple searches and we'll look at some of the images that you can license uh, with a Creative uh, uh, Commons license. We'll talk about a couple of other methods uh, then uh, in addition to this. So let me pull up Flickr. And I could go and do a search here. Let's say I want to do a search on soccer. I'm just going to start the search. Here I'll see all the pictures that people have posted that they have tagged with soccer. I'm going to go to advanced search now because that's where we can put in some more parameters. 
All right. Now, I can search with in the Creative Commons licensed content, and I can specify, do I want to find content to use commercially, or do I want to find content to modify, adapt, or build upon? So I can click, I'll click both of these so we get the most inclusive search. All right. So we can look through, and depending on the topic that you pick, you might get some great pictures, or you might get some kind of mediocre pictures. These are just regular folks that are posting them. Let's find, well, let's, let's pick this one. Let's say we want to use this one just for the, the heck of it. When I click on it, again, if I look over here, it's licensed with a Creative Commons license. I can click there and I can see this. So, I am free to share this, so I'm free to take it and use it on my site. I'm, a fr I'm, fr I'm uh, free to edit it, so I could go and Photoshop it and, and change it from color to black and white, for example. Or I could Photoshop it to show a picture of me sitting in one of those chairs or whatever. And I'm also free to make commercial use following, uh, under the following conditions that I give credit. All right, so I could use this picture on my page as long as I give credit to the creator of the picture. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to download this picture. I can view all sizes. I'll download the medium version of it. All right. And now I've, I've downloaded it. I'm not sure where it went, but it went somewhere. Probably my downloads folder. go and drag it to my desktop. I assume that's a picture. All right, sure enough it is. And I'm going to keep this open so that I can go and I can give credit for it. I can say, you know, photo found uh, on Flickr and post a link to it. Yes? What, what is the, uh, the best way for the attribution? Do you embed it inside the photo or do you have know, the pages to edit it twice to get the attribution? Um, Typically what I would do is I would put it close to where the photo was. So um, I'm not a lawyer, so I couldn't tell you like what legally if there's any difference between that. But if I were doing this, I might put something, might put something, for example, in the footer that says picture of, of, of soccer stadium taken from. And then I would post a link to this would probably be the best, best way to, to uh, give attribution to it. All right. Now, if I'm not mistaken, our friend Google also, if you go into advanced search, I hate, I hate when they move things. There we go, advanced search. We can search for, go to Google image search. We can go for, within Google, things that are licensed with a Creative Commons license. So, Flickr's a good source, uh, Google's a good source, but again, do keep in mind that uh, with images, 
if you're using them for a commercial or for even a personal site, you can't simply take it. You have to look for things that people have, have in advance given you permission. And that style of, of giving permission is called the Creative Commons license. So that's, a, that's another way to get pictures besides taking them yourself. You know, um, I might not be able to go to a stadium to take a picture of the seats, for example. It might be difficult for me to do that. Whereas, you know, I could go and I could find one and I could use it. Another way to do it is to visit uh, a stock uh, photography site. There's a number of stock uh, photos. And what stock photos are is professional photographers and increasingly even some amateurs or skilled amateurs take pictures of people in typical situations. Like, they'll take a picture of someone riding a bike. All right? And they'll put that out there. Um, there's a number of these. There's an iStock photo site that I could go and I could look for and do a search for. Oh, I think I, I think I didn't search right. There we go. So, here's a picture, but again, it costs us some money to get that. Now, these are royalty free. What that means is, is that you only pay to use it. You don't pay every time you use it. So, if you were purchase the rights of this, you know, it's not like you would give them. If you purchase the rights to this, let's say, and used it in your book, it's not as though you'd have to give them money every, for every book that was sold or, or whatever. Now, if you notice, the quality of this picture, you can probably see, is much better. So, well, you know, but you're getting it, you're paying for it. Yes? Um, like if I wanted to use it and then you wanted to use it, we both pay to see would, would the same picture be able to be used by both of Oh, absolutely. Uh, in fact, if you pay real close attention, I've noticed this a few times, that like if you look at ads in magazines, yeah. occasionally you'll see the same picture used in a couple places. Actually, uh, I, I forget the name of the book. There's one, there, there, there's, there's uh, I've seen a, a picture on the cover of a book that was also used in an advertisement as well. So yeah. You know, they make their, their money that way. They, you know, they try to make good quality pictures. I will say, this is one thing that the internet has killed for photographers. All right? Stock photos used to be like big, easy money for photographers because, uh, you know, they had the professional equipment. They would take the pictures, they'd make it available, and, and they'd charge a pretty penny for it. Now, anyone with a little bit of money and... Um, a little bit of practice and skill can take pretty good pictures with like digital SLRs and, and so on. And they can make those available. Well, what do we remember from economics? Supply and demand. Supply goes up through the roof. What happens to the price? Goes down. All right. So in the old days, they might have been able to ask a lot more money for this. All right. So this is another way. So the three ways then essentially are do it yourself. Obtain permission either through requesting specifically from the copyright holder permission or uh, via finding something licensed under a Creative Commons license. Or lastly, using some sort of stock photo service where you, you can, uh, you can uh, uh, you know, pay for the rights to use a particular photo. All right. Notice how they put their logo there in a manner that would be very difficult to Photoshop out. I don't know if you can, yeah, you can probably see that. Um, that way you can't just, you know, save image as and, and use it anyhow. <laughs> All right. So a lot of times photographers do that. It's like, it's called a watermark and, you know, it, it, it keeps you from just um, stealing it. All right. So now that we got the image, what are we going to do with it? All right. Let's go and let's put it on one of our pages. All right. So 
let's open up this page in Notepad and let's go in and let's put I'm going to rename this so it has a simpler name. I'll rename it the stadium. All right. So we should kind of see what's coming. All right. That how are we going to do this? You know, we're going to do this via a tag. All right. How do you put something on and how do you put a piece of content on your HTML page? Put it on a tag. All right. You use a tag for it. The tag for images is IMG. All right. Simple enough. Not the full word image, but just IMG. Now, just like with links, if you remember with links, we couldn't simply say we had a link. Right? That's only part of the information. We have to specify a link to what. All right. Likewise, we have to do that with image. We want to have an image here. Okay, which image? There might be, we might have hundreds of images on our website. Uh, and, and which one of them do we want to show? So we have to specify the name of the image that we want to show. Now I'm going to keep things simple for now. And everything's in the same folder, right? So my, both my HTML file and my image file are both in the same folder. So when you have that, all you need to do is put the name of the image, the file name of the image, in the source attribute. So I will say src equals stadium.jpg. All right. Where did I get that? Well, again, that's the name of the file. If I go on the desktop. Yeah, first one, stadium.jpg. Here again is where it's important to have your file extensions turned on. All right? Because JPEGs can be .jpg, .jpeg, .jpe. In addition, there's other formats for images besides JPEGs. There's PNG files and there's GIF files. You should use one of those three formats for your images. Uh, PNG, JPEG, or GIF. JPEG files are good for photographs typically. GIFs are good for like drawings, like line drawings. Like if we go to LC's site, no, we don't have to go to LC's site. This little image here, all right, that's probably a GIF file, a GIF file. Because this kind of data, this kind of image can be stored more efficiently in a GIF file as opposed to a JPEG. And PNGs are sort of like JPEGs. Um, okay, so we have our image. So we say we have an image here. We want the source of that image to be stadium.jpg. We're going to add on every image one additional attribute. All right. And that is the alt attribute. Alt equals. And what we're going to put here is we're going to put a brief text explanation of what that image is. We do this for a couple of reasons. All right. First of all, if um, someone is accessing this page via a screen reader using assistive technologies, if they're blind and they're accessing it uh, via the screen reader, the screen reader will read the alt attribute to the person. So the person, they can't see the picture, but it'll give them a sense of what that picture is. So I could say, picture of seats in empty stadium. The other thing, that, that way again, it's not as good as seeing a picture, right? But there's nothing you can do to, to help a blind person see uh, a picture. But you can at least give them a sense of what that image represents. All right. 
Now, with the image tag, there really isn't a start and end image tag. I guess we could do, we could do this. All right. But there's never going to be anything between the start and end image tag, like there is with the other tags. So there's a shorthand for this. This is called an empty tag. And the shorthand for that is to do this. Oops. And that indicates that this is a start and end tag rolled into one. That's called an empty tag. And it's good practice to do that. All right. Strictly speaking, you don't have to do that. You could leave it without an end tag, but I don't know. The obsessive part of me is uncomfortable with that. So I'll put an ending tag on that. So now let's go and look at it. All right. Let's go and look at it. So I'll save it. Oh. I better remember the credit. URL. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I like the site instead of that. That's a more correct tag. Occasionally, I will slip back out of HTML5 mode into how we did it previously. Um, all right. So now we go and save this. And let's view the page. And there we go. Keep in mind, I, I have zoomed in so that it's more readable. I've zoomed it in. The, the natural size for this is like that. So there we have, there we have the image. All right. Now, if something were to happen, for example, if my webmaster went and accidentally renamed this image, all right, then we would see a little broken image lo logo. And interestingly enough, we do not see in this particular browser. Let's view it in Internet Explorer. In Internet Explorer, we see the alternate text. In addition, if this was being accessed via a screen reader, we would have the alternate text being read in the screen reader. So let's go and let's remember to, to rename this back. Now, notice I didn't put, I didn't say anything about how big the image is. If I don't say how big the image is, the browser figures out how big the image is based on the size of the image. All right. So this image, let me open it up in this photo editor. This image is 448 by 299 pixels. All right. So. One suggestion they have in the book, one that I rarely take, all right, is you can actually put the height and width in here. And that just sort of gives the browser a hint, so the browser has to do a little less work. So even though the browser can figure it out, you can give the browser a hint and say, by the way, this is how big that image is. 
and that should make your images load a little bit quicker. I don't really know if it's worth the trouble or not. I usually don't take the trouble to do that. Now, I could use the height and width if I wanted to resize the image. There's a catch here that we'll come to in a minute. All right. I could go in and I could make this, let's say, 150 by 224. And then the image appears smaller. All right. Here's the catch, though. This image is a certain number of bytes. And we can look at that under properties and see that this image is 68.7 KB. So 70,000 bytes, all right, give or take. If we put a size on the image, it still downloads the full 70,000 bytes. All right. So if you have a big, massive image and you resize it to be a tiny image, you haven't really gained anything as far as download speed. Now, web connections are getting faster, right? I mean, uh, a lot of people have high-speed internet at home you know, compared to dial-up and so on. But especially with the advent of a lot of mobile browsing and so on, um, the speed at which your page downloads is always going to be a factor. All right? So you want to be concerned not to have extra stuff on your page that's going to slow down the download uh, of it. All right? The web... Uh, or, or the old cliche of a picture being a thousand words may be true, but a picture better be worth at least a thousand words because a picture takes up a lot more space than text. All right. For example, here, this is sixty or this is seventy thousand characters of data. The web page that we have here is one thousand characters. So that's 70 times bigger, that one image is, than the rest of the web page. So even though download speeds are getting faster, you still want to be aware of the size of your, uh, your, the size of your images. All right? and, and make sure that you don't put things on your page that don't have value. All right? The danger in what we're learning, you know, this is where Spider-Man becomes instructive, all right, with great power becomes great responsibility, right? We're going to learn some, we're going to have some great power as we learn about images and as we learn about CSS. We need to use them responsibly. In other words, now that we know how to have images on our page, don't throw 500 images on your page just because I know how to put images on my page, right? That will make for a page that's very hard to download. Uh, and again, um, you know, the, the speed of downloading it will, will um, you know, will, will be affected by that. There's another thing at work, though, right? The more things that you add on the page, the more potential distractions you have for your user. Your page becomes cluttered, and the person can't focus on the stuff that's really meaningful. So, be, you know, put stuff on the page that adds value to your page. Don't put stuff on your page just because now we know how to put images on the page. If one image is good, then 10 images will be even better. All right? Pick and choose the content that you have on the page in a way that, that enhances your communication of, of your main idea. Again, this is going back to what I probably said the first or second day of class. There's always two aspects to web development. There's the technical aspect, then there's the design aspect. The technical aspect is like, what, do, what tag do I make to put an image on my page? All right. The design aspect is, hmm, how many images should I put on my page to most effectively communicate the message that I'm trying to communicate? All right. Now, so you can resize the image via this height and weight width attribute, but the first catch is, that you um, are still downloading the full size image. 
So you're not gaining any download speed by resizing it. I mean, I can make this tiny if I want to. Tiny little image. It still downloaded the full 70,000 bytes worth. All right. There's another danger with this. What was the original width? Anyone remember? 448, thanks. If I don't get these numbers right, I'm going to distort the image. For example, if I read, read it wrong and I put, instead of 448, I put 484. All right. If I go and view this, Notice what it does. It stretches out the image and it distorts it. All right. So if you don't get those things right, all right, um, you are you, you know you're going to end up distorting the image. That you know people have their pet peeves. That's one of my pet peeves. All right. If you resize an image and you this is called the aspect ratio, the ratio of the height to width. If you resize an image and you end up stretching it either across or up and down. I, that just reeks of amateurism in my book, and, and it, it's always upsetting for me. Then I have to, I have to take a break and, and have a cup of tea and rest, and when I come back, I'm in a worse mood, so I'm probably harder on everyone else after you that gets graded. No, I'm just kidding, just kidding. Just kidding about some of that stuff. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That, and again, I can see the value of that, although that's something I don't personally practice. I guess that doesn't bother me. We all have our, our things that bother us. Now, one thing about an image, you can always make an image smaller, you can't make an image bigger. All right? Because there's simply not enough information to make an image that big. All right? All this stuff is stored as data. And so if I make, the, make it smaller, there's enough data to do that. But if I were to make it bigger, let's make it gigantic. You end up getting blurred. And if you look real, well, it's kind of hard to see here, but you get what's called pixelization, where um, it becomes jagged. And instead of being a continuous shade of color moving from light orange to dark orange, you can see little squares of, you know, looking here on the monitor, I can see little squares where it's light, little darker, dark, as opposed to continuous flow. So you can never make an image bigger. Now, one thing that you can do that can help get rid of the problem with the aspect ratio is only change one of these. So, for example, if I make the width 224, and omit the height, the browser calculates it for me. All right. So if, if I'm going to put a size on it, I'll typically just put the size of the width and, and let it figure out what the height is. All right. Obviously, it just goes right where you to let you go. Yeah. Uh, the, the images are inline tags, so they go in line. Uh, we'll talk more about the position. Uh, of this when we get into CSS. Now, what I would recommend, what I typically want to do is if I want to make my image smaller, I do not um, use the attributes in the image tag to make it smaller. I'll simply make a smaller copy of the image. All right? It's important to keep the original. All right? Because remember, you can always make an image smaller, but once you make the image smaller, you can't make it bigger again because you've lost that information and you'll get blurring and the pixelization and all that. All right? And I'll, I'll demonstrate that in a minute here. So, if I was going to, if I really wanted to, to be half as big, all right, I'd make a copy of it, tuck it away somewhere safe, 
of the original size. That way if I decided later that I wanted to, um, you know, maybe make it a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger, I'd do it off the original as opposed to off the copy. JPEGs are what are called, use what is called uh, lossy compression, which means every time you compress a JPEG, you lose a little bit of information. All right? And therefore, if I made it a half, I want to make it a quarter, I'd be better off taking the original and making it a quarter instead of going half and half. All right. Anyhow, let's go and let's edit this. So I can go up here under Tools. was doing so good too. <laughs> under actually not under tools, under picture, resize, and I can go in and I can say what size do I want to make it. So I can make this maybe like 50%. Well, I'm in whatever editing tool you have on 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 your machine. Depending on what platform you're on, Mac, Windows, um, what version of Windows you have, what software you have installed. Um, most of them come with at least some sort of simple editing and if not, you can, you can download one. If, if you run into difficulty with this, um, you know, I, I can make some suggestions. You know, at the high end there's things like Photoshop, but that costs you. Uh, but, and then there's, there's sort of, uh, there's an open source alternative to Photoshop, which is actually very good and absolutely free. And then there are other tools that, that you can use. At any rate, I can go and I can resize it and save it. And then I can use a resized image on the page. All right. I can't go the other direction now. Well, one thing to notice, by the way, is I made it half as big. The number of bytes went from 70,000 to 18,000. All right? So it didn't, it didn't go half the bytes. Why is that? Well, we're working in two dimensions. We saved half the width, half the height. So it's a fourth, approximately, as big as the original was. So you can get some big savings that way. Again though, I can't go in the opposite direction. If I go in and I tried to resize this and make it gigantic, yeah, um, probably most obvious over here, you get pixelization, you get little jagged edges to what should be a smooth line. So you can always you can always resize down. You can't resize up. All right. Um, I think I'm going to leave it off there. Um, all this is based on the fact that you keep the image in the same place as you have your HTML. All right. At some point, I'm not sure if they discuss it in the book or not. I, I don't really recall. Uh, what if you want to put it in a different directory? All right. Okay. Yeah, we'll 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 pick up on that uh, at some point in the future. Right now, I think it's enough just to get some images on your page. Now, feel free. For example, even if if you know if you're still working on the one assignment or whatever, feel free to to, to add images to it, even if it wasn't uh, something that's required. You're always allowed to do more than than what's asked for. All right. Other questions? All right. We'll see you up in lab. <laughs>